Escape from Tarkov 0.15 patch is finally here and it came with a wipe and this was the longest wipe cycle in Tarkov history. And if Tarkov continues to wipe at Christmas, we will now be in our shortest wipe in history. So as with routine, I thought I'd come on and talk to you about settings because with this patch all of the settings were reset, all of your controls were reset and people are struggling with performance, especially with the new season because we are now in the summer weather conditions so everything's a bit more vibrant, everything's a bit more luscious, everything's got more foliage and foliage tanks your FPS. So I'm going to go through what I usually do, run through my settings, run through what you can do to improve your performance and I'm going to start as per usual with outside of the game. So outside of the game we're going to talk about the usual things that you can do to improve performance on all games not just Escape from Tarkov. The first thing is make sure your graphics card drivers and Windows updates are done. Now Windows updates I don't mean like quality updates so much, I more mean security updates and hot fixes and patches like that. As long as they're done and it's up to date that will be better for you. And even if you're on Windows 10, I'm not saying jump to Windows 11, just make sure you have the latest version of Windows 10, so on and so forth. Just make sure you're patched and up to date on both your graphics card side and your operating system side. Then what you can do is go ahead and press the start button and type game mode settings and it will come up game mode settings right here. You're going to then want to turn on game mode and this basically optimizes your PC when you are playing games, so if it recognizes a game is being played, it will turn off things in the background, stop things from running in the background, reduce your background processes, and just make it an overall better experience while you're playing games. Nice and easy. Then underneath it, you should see related settings and then graphics, but if you don't see that, you just need to go to system, display, then graphics, and you'll be brought to this page here. All you need to do is scroll down to you see escape from Tarkov.exe, click into it, go to options and then go to high performance to pick the right GPU and there you go nice and easy right so just make sure that's set to high performance and you should be good to go the next thing you're going to want to do is open up the Battlestate games launcher there's a couple of things you can do here to stop this launcher running in the background whilst you are playing games and then all you're going to need to do is click on your name up the top, click on the drop down, go to launcher settings, scroll all the way down, and then you can, if you haven't in a while, clean your temp folder. Because, especially if you've been playing wipe after wipe and you've just been updating the game as it goes, you could have like 8, 9 gigs of things in your temp folder because it just builds up over time. It doesn't wipe when wipe happens. You'll have old stuff in this temp folder, so just clear it out. It's always worth doing. It won't affect your game at all. And then you've got two options here about midway down the page, and it is when I close the launcher window, you're gonna to wanna to click the drop down and click exit the launcher. And then when I launch the game, I click the drop down and click exit the launcher completely. This just makes sure the launcher isn't running in the background while your game is running. This just takes up extra PC processes, you don't want that. Just bin it off when you are playing your game because it doesn't need the launcher open to actually run. After that, we're gonna go into our NVIDIA control panel. Now, if you have an AMD graphics card, I'm sorry, I do not have one, but for those NVIDIA people, I will show you what you can do in your NVIDIA control panel to actually get the game to run a lot smoother and it will make a noticeable difference. I assume that AMD and Radeon have very similar sections in their control panel, so if you want to figure it out yourself, go ahead or find an AMD guide on the internet, I'm sure there's tons. So if you click on your task tray at the bottom right of your taskbar, and then you'll see the NVIDIA logo, right click on it and go to NVIDIA control panel. It'll open up and you're going to want to go to manage 3D settings which is the second option down on the left hand side and you can see we're in global settings now this changes things for your entire PC we don't want that we want to change it just for escape from Tarkov so you're going to go to program settings and then click on the drop down list and find escape from Tarkov.exe if it's not here because sometimes it won't be you need to click add and it will bring up a list of items you might find it in here, 
If not, you can browse for it and go to your install location. So it'll be the C drive probably, Battlestate Games, Escape from Tarkov, and it's just Escape from Tarkov application here. And then once you've done that, it will add it nice and easy. And then all you're going to need to do is change the things that I have in bold here. Now I've talked about it in previous videos in a bit more detail, but when you're going through this, as you can see as I hover over an item, you get a small description of what each item does. So I'm not going to discuss it in too much detail because it will make the video like half an hour long. Make sure you just read over these yourself because they're very self-explanatory for the most part, but it does give you a nice bit of description for each one. So the first thing is anisotropic filtering. We're going to keep that on application controlled, which should be the default. Then anti-aliasing FXAA we're going to put to off. Anti-aliasing gamma correction we are going to put to on. Anti-aliasing mode we're going to put to application controlled. Anti-aliasing transparency is going to be off. Background application max frame rate we're going to have off. Low latency mode we're going to set to ultra. Max frame rate you can put this one to your monitor's max refresh rate. So my monitor is 165 hertz. If your monitor is 244, you can type 244 in here. Don't put it more than your monitor is capable of because it won't make any difference and it'll just cut anything. You'll get some jarring, jitteriness. You might get some screen tearing. So just make sure it's your max monitor refresh rate. And then after that, you're going to put multi-frame sampled AA or MFAA. We're going to set that to off. Then your OpenGL rendering GPU, it might say auto select, but it might pick your inbuilt graphics card on your motherboard. So make sure you actually go in and select your GPU. As you can see, I'm using a 3070 laptop GPU in here, purely because uh, my PC's water cooling split the pipes. So there's no PC for me at the minute. Next up is power management mode. We're gonna do prefer maximum performance. Texture filtering, which is anisotropic sample optimization, we can have that on. Texture filtering, negative LOD bias, we're going to have allow. Then texture filtering quality, we are going to have that set to high performance. Texture filtering trilinear optimization is set to on. Threaded optimization is set to on. Triple buffering is off. Vertical sync is off. And that, my friends, is everything in this settings section. There's not too many settings here that have been changed from default, but some of them have. So just go through the settings nice and easy. And once you've done that, you are finally ready to go in the game and change your graphics settings. So once you've opened your game, you can go into your settings down the bottom right, and the first thing we're going to look at is the game tab. Now, most of this is personal preference entirely. Whether you want your stamina and stance to be shown all the time or your health condition, that's completely up to you. I won't go through it. But what I will talk about is this option for vaulting over medium obstacles. You can either set this to auto, which means if you move over a rock or something and the rock is small enough, your character will automatically mantle over it. So if you're running through the woods, you won't get stuck on any obstacles. I tend to have this always set to hotkey for a very specific reason. If I am in a firefight and I am peeking an angle and I'm behind a small amount of cover, if I accidentally move forward an inch and I have this set to auto, my character has the chance of mantling on top of it, bringing me completely out of cover and in the eye line of an enemy, whether that be an AI scav, a boss, or a PMC. So I tend to always have this hotkeyed because the hotkey is just spacebar to mantle on top of things, like you would mantle over larger objects. I just like having a bit more control of my PMC, right? You might think auto would be great for not getting stuck on those little obstacles, but for the how little you actually get stuck on them, I'd rather have me have to press spacebar than the other situation where you're in cover and you don't want to crest the top of a rock, but your character does it for you anyway without you actually having any control over it. 
So again, it's your choice, but I highly recommend having hotkey set. And then you can go down to this new item option here, which is your auto add to wish list. Now this adds hideout items and stuff like that, and you can clear it. It doesn't really affect your performance. So I recommend leaving it how it is. And a lot of the default wish lists have hideout items already built in. So you don't need to worry about finding them and building it up from scratch. But if you do, then you can clear your wish list. The main thing is this little bottom section here. You've got automatic RAM cleaner, which I now always have on. It's pretty good now. It used to, back in the day, really affect performance and not work very well. But with Tarkov being how Tarkov is, the more raids you play, the slowly more and more RAM is being used. So say you go into your first raid and it's using 8 gig of RAM. After your fourth raid, your game would be using 12 gig of RAM. That is prevented with automatic RAM cleaner. So rather than using a third party app, which you can do, that's still a thing that you could do and it might work slightly better than in game. Rather than having a separate app running in the background and eating your computer's resources, I recommend just using the in-game one. It's pretty good that doing what it needs to do, keeping that RAM usage below 12. And then I've got only use physical cores selected. Basically, your computer's CPU, if it is a hyper-threaded CPU, it will have logical cores and physical cores. The physical cores are what do the bulk of the work. The logical cores then get brought in and the CPU automatically tells itself to chop and change between physical and logical cores depending what processes it is doing. Ticking this box means that there is no swap over. So you are only using your physical cores of your CPU, but that means you are not having that chop and change between logical and physical cores. And you may think, well, Sam, having more cores, whether that be logical or physical, will help with the performance. But unfortunately, what this does is when the swap over happens, you notice micro stutters. This is what causes, or one of the things that causes micro stutters in this game. So if you have any sort of modern day CPU, I recommend turning this on and then if you want to trial it out, turn it off for a couple of raids and see what works better for you, I recommend doing that. The next thing is the graphic settings. These are quite self-explanatory for the most part, but I will go through them. Your screen refresh rate needs to be at the maximum, so if you're using a 1440p screen, then you need to have it on 2560 by 1440 If you're on 1080p, then have it set to 1920, 1080p, etc, etc. Your aspect ratio should be 16 by 9 or 16 by 10. It will tell you when you change your screen resolution. Just make sure the aspect ratio matches. And then for screen mode, I've got it set to full screen. It makes tabbing in and out of the game a little bit more of a hassle, but having it on borderless or windowed had a, it has a slight little bit of input latency when you're playing the game, and we don't want that. And then obviously set your monitor to your main gaming monitor here. You'll notice that the VSync box and multi-monitor support is greyed out at the minute. So that is because of some of the settings that we've changed down here. We are going to go to the overall graphics quality and turn that all the way to low now. And that's just because it requires us to change less things when we go in and change things manually. As soon as we start changing things, it will change to custom. So don't worry about that. Texture quality, we're going to keep as high. Anything lower and objects start blending in with each other. So if you're trying to spot a player against a similar color background, then you might notice that those colors and objects blend in a little bit too well. So you can't spot players as easily. If you are noticing that your FPS isn't very good, you can drop it to medium. Never drop it to low. It's not worth dropping it to low at all unless you're running a really, really basic system. What I do recommend dropping to low is shadow quality though. Shadow quality doesn't really do anything apart from brighten the shadows in darker areas. So if you're running around in woods, all of the tree shadows and the darkness, if you have shadow quality set to ultra, it will be quite dark underneath a tree. If you have it set to low, the shadows will be quite bright and less detailed, meaning you can spot people in darker areas a little bit more. And at further distances, the shadows won't even render. Your object level of detail quality is set to 2.5. Anything lower, it will start to cause that pop-in effect, so objects will pop in as you get closer to them. Anything higher, and you won't really notice a difference with how big the maps are, 
if the maps were sort of open world and everything was linked together, I might have this higher, but I don't because the maps are not big enough for it. Same with overall visibility. You don't need it any more than 1,500. If you do, it will just tank your performance and you won't really notice a difference other than the background items on maps. So the out of map areas where you can see streets in the background or something like that, that might appear a little more detailed, but it will tank your FPS. A new setting, which I don't see the point in, is cloud quality. Have this set to low. Unless you want your clouds to look really, really pretty and tank your performance, there's no need for it. I'm using NVIDIA DLSS because DLSS is always improving and much like with the AMD FSR, they have improved it with the latest patch so it works a little bit better. I will always have it only set to quality though. I don't have it set to anything lower unless I'm really struggling with performance. Quality will give you a nice boost in FPS comparing it to off, but it won't give you any of the ghosting effects that balancing and performance will give you. Again, I'm using NVIDIA DLSS, so AMD FSR and that is off, but if you are using AMD FSR, use 3.0 and have it set to quality as well if you're going to use it. And then HBAO is set to max performance, always max performance, and then SSR which is your reflections, whether that be water, window reflections, reflections off of cars, etc. That's set to low. I don't have this set to off, and I say it quite a bit. It will drop your performance by a couple having this on, but having it set to low actually helps with my PvP a little bit. I can see reflections of players a bit more easier. So if I am around a corner and I hear someone running, I might be able to spot them in a reflection of something like a puddle or a lake or something like that and it allows me to identify players more so than you would think so that's quite good to have on even if it is just set to low and isotropic filtering is set to off and nvidia reflex low latency i've got this set to on and boost i am trialing this out between on and off i can't really notice a visual difference but it isn't affecting my performance either so I'd rather have it on just in case it's giving me the slight edge and then I can turn it off and test and on and test so I'm having it on at the minute it seems to work well for me I don't notice a dip in performance compared to having it off so I've just got this set to on my sharpness is at the default 0.7 and then my lobby FPS limit and game FPS limit is all set to maximum and then you've got MIP streaming buffer size and MIP streaming disk usage. This is grayed out because we've turned it off on the tick boxes here. In fact, all of the tick boxes are turned off, especially grass shadows and noise. Noise makes the game look awful. Grass shadows makes the game look very dark. The only thing that I've got turned on is Streets of Tarkov lower texture resolution mode, which basically lowers the textures around you if they're at a distance. So you don't notice it so much. You think the game doesn't look worse but it will help your performance when things are loading in just because of how much there is. This also works on Ground Zero as well. So it also improves your performance on Ground Zero because even though that is a small map, there are tons of objects loading in, especially the out of bounds areas like the streets, buildings and stuff like that. So have it turned on, you'll notice a difference. You can always turn it off if you don't like it. Moving on to post effects. This is my post effects. It's always been this way. Again, personal preference, but this is always how I've had it. It gives a really nice hint of blue and purple in darker areas, which allows you to see things a little easier and it brightens the shadows, especially on maps like Interchange where the lighting is quite dark. This works amazingly well. And then the only thing I would ever change is the brightness. So if it is really bright in certain areas, I'll turn the brightness down to zero and then up to 30 on the darker maps. What you can do is turn this on, go into an offline raid, and then you will get a visualize button if you go into your settings while in a raid, and you can change things on the fly and you'll see it change in real time. Recommend doing that. These are my settings, but of course it's personal preference. The only thing that I should recommend you do is go through your controls. I have my controls set to default. The only thing that I have changed is the sprinting. I don't have that set to press, I have it to continuous, so if I do take my finger off a shift, then it will stop sprinting rather than continue to sprint until I press shift again. 
this has all changed back to what it was set to at default. So if you did change a lot of your controller settings, make sure you go in, change it back to how it was because with the wipe, it was reset to default. Other than that, it should make your game going from looking like this with a very low FPS like you're seeing on screen to looking like this with a lot higher FPS, a little bit brighter, a little bit better. And I hope this video helps as it always does seem to. Thank you so much for your support on these kind of videos. I really do appreciate it. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.